What's good, y'all? It's Boy Ross back here again with another video. So, we're gonna check out 10 times TNA went further than the WWE Attitude Era. This is gonna be quite interesting because, uh, from what I heard, I never really watched TNA too much like that back then. But from what I heard, it was it was some wild stuff on that show from time to time. So we're going to check out some of those moments where they even went further than WWE and the Attitude Era. Appreciate all love and support. Let's get right into this one, man. What if I told you that once on wrestling television, a male wrestler hopped into a box beside a female interviewer with the implication being that he was caressing his own courgette, much to the interviewer's disgust. What kind Whoa. of promotion would you say that that might happen in? What kind of era might that happen Whoa. in? One with Mae Young giving birth to a hand and Jerry Lawler commenting every single line like a horny teenager, perhaps? Oh, my friends, you have so much to learn. Whoa. I'm Andy from What Culture Wrestling, and here are 10 times TNA went further than the WWE Attitude Era. Number 10. Wrestler diddles himself in a bin. Puppet the Psycho Dwarf was the name of the aforementioned trash can stroker in this segment. Interviewed by Goldilocks in TNA in 2002. Remember that year because it's going to come up a lot. He claimed he was <clears throat> meditating while the act was going on. Soundtracked by the furious sound of his fist Fudding against the plastic. I don't know what kind of meditation that man's into, but I've never heard of this one. Anyway, his excited face twisted in pleasure, looking a lot like what Vince McMahon probably resembles when it's time to bury one of your favorites. All I ask, dear friends, is that you don't repeat my mistake and seek this segment out online. I'm literally scarred for life now. What has been awful, seen cannot bro. be uns- You're just checking it off in a trash can. <laughs> What in the hell, bro? Seen and I'm broken forever. Seriously, oh my watch God. It. Number nine, <laughs> the Johnsons. Now, I don't know if you understood the subtle humor of this one, yeah. but Johnson is another word for Willie, and these chaps dressed like Willies. As we all know, the best jokes are ones you have to explain. They were literal Willies, the Johnsons, and existed <laughs> in the same year, 2002, as Puppet the Psycho Dwarf and his meditation. This is something that WWE never did, even though the existence of Val Venus is yeah. something to consider. Consider. WWE did promote a wrestler who was a complete dick, but the Ultimate Warrior wasn't actually around in the Attitude Era, so let's move on. Number eight, Abyss gets set on fire. Kane and The Undertaker worked an Inferno match at Unforgiven 1998. It was more mm -hmm. of a literal firework display than anything else, yeah. and relatively safe. At the finish, Kane's arm was set ablaze in a carefully controlled stunt, and it was swiftly extinguished. Mm -hmm. TNA's version of Kane, Abyss, was a creepy monster boy positioned near the top of the main event scene to occupy wrestlers who were not in the immediate title picture. At least that was the case for much of his run. He was once set on fire even more than Kane, going further than the Attitude Era, with Raven and Stevie Richards sparking a near disaster. Abyss didn't have to sell this at all. He was almost burnt to a crisp in the oh. most stark Kane comparison imaginable. And it was literally too hot for TV as well. Spike were so appalled by the rehearsal footage that it ended up only going out on the official websites. Whoa. You're not actually supposed to set people on fire, guys. Come on. It's wrestling. It's not all that real. Number seven. Hey, yo, really hey, no, that's not, nah, bro. That's that's a little bit too far, bro. <laughs> Stupid weaponry. WWE's Attitude Era featured some pretty shocking and violent stuff. Mick Foley flung himself off Hell in a Cell. A bunch of wrestlers flew off the Titan Tron, and hardcore yeah. wrestling was king of the mid-card. In a lame attempt at faking such harrowing brutality, Triple H started wielding a sledgehammer that he couldn't really hit people with because if he did, their skulls would kind of collapse. It yeah. was a paradox that never should have been entertained. If something can be used in wrestling as a weapon, why is he only able to use it <laughs> at about 10%? That yeah. shouldn't really happen. But Janice, the spiked bat wielded by Abyss, was somehow even worse, particularly since he once punctured Rob Van Dam with it in an actual felonious assault, after which RVD was cool, bro, and Abyss was never charged with anything. Very Whoa. silly. Number six, some of the most wicked chair shots in history. Wait, wait, six wait, 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 wait. So not only did he get set on fire, but he was actually out here hitting people with, what is that? What was that? Uh, uh. Since he once punctured by Abyss was somehow even worse. Particularly since he once punctured Rob Van Damme. Why is he only able to use it at about what 10%? Is that that that's shouldn't just... really happen. But Janice, 
the spiked bat wielded by a was somehow wow, even that's worse. That's wild, particularly though. since he once punctured Rob Van Dam with it in an actual felonious assault, after which RVD was cool, bro, and Abyss was never charged with anything. That's Very wild. silly. Number six, some of the most wicked chair shots in history. Sickening, unprotected Jeez. steel chair shots to the head were commonplace in the Attitude Era. It was so dangerous, but so over with the crowd, so it happened all the time. And if you watch almost any episode of Raw from that period, you're gonna hear the unmistakable sound of steel on skull at yeah. least once. But TNA actually has even the worst WWE chair shots beaten. In one particularly disturbing spot, two days after the tragic passing of Chris Canyon, Homicide busted Rob Terry full force in the head. Oh. The resulting image was sickening, a river of blood flowing down the big man's skull. Sometimes it's easy, but the Jeez. passing of time to try and justify the odd modern chair shots until you rewatch this spot and remember the damage these things can do. Facts. Number five, Vince Russo's shaming obsession. WWE's shameful treatment of so many women on its roster remains one of the biggest problems with the Attitude Era. And Vince mm -hmm. Russo's treatment of Athena, not the AEW star, by the way, in TNA would actually put a lot of that attitude stuff to shame. Seeking to, and I quote, parody the Attitude Era's dark heart, Vince, as the leader of sports entertainment extreme reminded Athena what the company initials stood for. Lest we forget, TNA is what they were. Unleashing a toxic rant after she refused to cede to some awful demands. Russo insulted her and degraded her when Athena refused to bow. And after that, the Russo character moved towards her in a pretty disturbing fashion before ordering the Harris brothers to beat her up. Damn. If this was parody, and it wasn't, it was an excuse to be vile to women because this used to be a popular ratings device, it didn't yeah. work and it really sucked. Number four, Brian Christopher says the worst word. Nowadays, with uh -oh. the TV industry a bit more desperate to retain viewers, words like shh are thrown around in wrestling with no problems at all. But this was rarely uttered in the Attitude Era. Standards mm. and practices were a little bit different. Sure, Bob Holly called Michael Cole a shh head at WrestleMania 2000. <laughs> and said F you to Triple H on the UK exclusive Rebellion 1999 pay-per-view, but these two don't count. Even if Steve Austin live on the WWE Raw head of King of the Ring 98 said to Kane, you useless effer, if you set yourself on fire, you'd actually improve your mobility. TNA would still <laughs> have the edge on the Attitude Era. And that, my friends, is because Brian Christopher, captured at full volume by a hot ringside microphone, once unmistakably called his valet a see you next Tuesday in a match with Sean Waltman. Oh, yeah, nah. When you pull out the, when you pull out the C word, that's crazy, bro. <laughs> the advertisers, they just disappear. <laughs> what? The C word. Three, the Victory Road 2011 disaster. WWE received widespread, fierce, and justified criticism for failing to publicize Steve Austin's neck injury ahead of Survivor Series 1999. It mm -hmm. registered as an antagonistic FU Carney move, especially as Austin was replaced by Big Show in the end. So maybe <laughs> it was the most FU Carney move ever. Or was it? At TNA Victory Road 2011, Jeff Hardy, to use the old euphemism, was in no condition to perform. Yeah. He was inexplicably sent out to perform anyway, and in an unspeakably grim non-match with Sting, it went down as one of the most infamous moments in modern yeah, wrestling he was history. Out of it. In doing so, TNA somehow went further than the worst of WWE's Attitude Era. And twice, actually, they exploited an addict and went back yeah. on a main event at the very same time. Yeah, nah, he shouldn't have been out there at all. He, he was not in the right place mentally he was he was under influence he shouldn't have been out there Number two, the actual worst cage match ever. Unforgiven 1999's Kennel from Hell match is widely regarded as one of, if not the worst cage matches ever. But in my opinion, it's not the worst cage match ever. How could it be when this thing exists? Straight from the genius booking mind of Vince Russo, TNA presented an electrified yeah, cage electrified match between cage LAX match. and Team 3D. It was every bit as tedious as the Kennel, yeah. but even more disastrous than quite literally being pooped on by 
a dog. The electricity, quote unquote, was akin to asking the audience to turn around when performing a magic trick. Frazzle sounds yeah. dot wav played over the speakers and the lights turned on and off in a scene that would later be aped by AEW with their own yeah. explosive disaster years later. Mainstream North American wrestling spent so long telling you that you're stupid that it's a wonder <laughs> it still exists in such good health in 2023. And oh at number one, God. ugly homophobia. Technically, uh. Billy and Chuck debuted in the ruthless aggression era, but there's no fundamental difference between that and attitude. If anything, ruthless aggression was equally awful in its grim pursuit of shock value. Billy and Chuck were heavily insinuated to be lovers and indeed were set to be wed in an infamous 2002 angle. It was revealed to be a publicity stunt and it proved wrong the old adage that all publicity is good publicity because business didn't improve one bit. In 2002, that year again, the Rainbow Express were a tag team introduced by TNA. They disgusted the broadcast team who were Whoa. asked to play homophobes when these guys were in their Damn. presence. And indeed, their fellow competitors were on the same boat as well, two of whom, the Dup brothers, outright refused to wrestle the Rainbow Express. This was received by the crowd as some kind of baby face gesture. That's how it was put Damn. together by the writers. Wrestling has an awful history with this kind of thing. And sometimes it even tries to get away with it by slyly laughing at what it's doing. But this was something Damn. else. This was overt disdain. And we must never see it again. But yeah, nah. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. Oh, they, they're gay. We're not wrestling no gay guys. <laughs> That's wild, bro. But once again, it was a different time period. You could get away with a lot of wild stuff back then on television. It, you Stuff you could say and do then, you cannot say and do now. So comment down below. Let me know some other TNA moments where you were just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is kind of wild. <laughs> and it definitely probably wouldn't get wouldn't get shown on today's television. Uh, but I appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on channel Rose 150k. I'm still the undisputed YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all keeping me. See y'all next one. Peace.